So now we're going to look at the next page in your gold packet. The previous video looked at the reaction stoichiometry for a problem that started with zinc 2 sulfide. The next page in your packet looks at the following question. Solutions of copper 2 chloride and sodium carbonate react to form a precipitate. Question number four in this handout asks to write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction described above, including all states of matter. So the first thing that we need to do for our components is determine their chemical formulas. Copper 2 chloride, remember that the Roman numeral of 2 tells me the charge on the copper. So I have copper with the charge of plus 2. I have chloride as my counter ion, which has a charge of minus 1. So that means that my chemical formula for copper 2 chloride is going to be CuCl2. When it comes to sodium carbonate, sodium has a charge of plus 1. My carbonate ion is CO3 2 minus. And so when I put those two compounds together, my chemical formula is going to be Na2CO3. Both of these compounds are soluble aqueous ionic compounds. So they'll each have an aqueous state of matter in this equation. Now, we're told that a precipitate forms, but we're not told the identity of the precipitate. So what we have to do is we have to determine what the identity of the precipitate is going to be. That means I need to look at what happens when my ions change partners. So I have my copper two plus ion, I have my chloride ion, I have my sodium cation, and I have my carbonate ion. Now, as I look at what happens when my ions change partners, I'm looking to see what happens when I have copper and carbonate in the same solution. When I have copper and carbonate in the same solution, the chemical formula for the compound that results is going to be CuCO3. And when you look at your solubility rules, you see that carbonates are generally insoluble. Copper is not an exception. So that tells us that this is going to be the precipitate in our reaction. That means we're going to have a solid state of matter in the balanced chemical equation. Now, when we look at the opposite pairings for our other ions, we have sodium and chloride, and we know from our everyday lives that sodium chloride is a soluble ionic compound. So my other product here is NaCl with an aqueous state of matter. Now, when I go to balance this chemical equation, I'm going to need a coefficient of two in front of my sodium chloride, and that gives me an overall balanced chemical equation. Now, the next question asks, what mass of precipitate would form if 66.8 milliliters of a 0.724 molar solution of copper 2 chloride reacts with excess sodium carbonate? So when we look at the details in this problem, we're told that we have 66.8 milliliters of a 0.724 molar solution of copper 2 chloride. We know that we have excess sodium carbonate, and we're looking to calculate the mass of the precipitate. So if we look at our balanced chemical equation, what we know is information about copper 2 chloride. I have 66.8 milliliters, and the concentration of my solution is 0 0.724 molar. Now, I'm looking to calculate a mass of the precipitate, and by writing the balanced chemical equation, I know that it's the copper 2 carbonate that's going to be my precipitate in this reaction. So overall, the relationship that I need for this problem is the relationship between my copper 2 chloride and my copper 2 carbonate, and you see from the balanced chemical equation that we have implied coefficients of 1 in front of each of these components. So we have an overall one-to-one -one mole ratio for these components. Now, we're also told on the problem that we have excess sodium carbonate right there. That means that we don't care about sodium carbonate in this particular problem. We're focused just on this relationship between my copper 2 chloride and my copper 2 carbonate. When we use molarity in these stoichiometry problems, I often see students have more difficult with these types of problems. So make sure you work practice problems using molarity. So in order to start, we know that we have a volume and a molarity for our copper two chloride. We're going to need to relate this to moles of copper two chloride. From there, we can get to moles of copper 2 carbonate. 
And finally, we can calculate the mass of my precipitate, so my copper two carbonate. Okay, so rather than starting with grams like we did in the previous example, we're starting with a volume and a molarity, and we need to use that information to get to moles. So I know that molarity is equal to my moles of solute divided by my liters of solution. Okay, and if you look at the information that was given to us in the problem, we have milliliters of solution and the molarity, and we need to use that information to get to moles. So you can plug right into this equation and solve, or you can set it up as dimensional analysis. Either way is fine. Either way should give you the same answer. If we set it up with dimensional analysis, I'm going to take my 0.0668 liters. That's the conversion from 66.8 milliliters to liters. Make sure you write it out if you have any difficulty getting to that in your head or by moving the decimal point. This has units of liters. So my molarity of 0.724 moles of my copper two chloride divided by my one liter of solution allows me to cancel my units of liters and leaves me with moles of copper two chloride. So my liters cancel, I'm left with moles of copper two chloride and that's exactly what I need right here in the problem. When you do this calculation, you should get 0.0484 moles of copper two chloride. Okay, 0.0484 moles of copper two chloride. So that puts us here in our strategy. Now we can convert, now we can convert, now we can convert from moles of copper two chloride to moles of copper two carbonate using the stoichiometry or the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So I'm gonna take my 0 0.0484 moles of copper two chloride times the mole ratio. So I need moles of copper two chloride in the denominator. I need moles of copper two carbonate in the numerator. And again, my coefficients from the balanced chemical equation give me that one to one mole ratio. So that in this reaction for every mole of copper two chloride that I start with, I'm gonna get one mole of copper two carbonate at the end. So that's gonna give me 0 0.0484 moles of copper two carbonate. Okay, finally the question asks you about the mass of the precipitate. So the last thing we need to do is convert from our moles of copper two carbonate to grams. In order to do that, we need to do the calculation of the molar mass of copper two carbonate. When you do that molar mass calculation, you will find that its molar mass is 123.56 grams. So now when we take our 0 0.0484 moles of copper two carbonate times the fact that one mole of copper two carbonate has a mass of 123.56 grams. And when we do the final conversion, we find that our final answer should be 5.98 grams of copper two carbonate.